We squeeze your face. Hello, folks. Nintendo just stealth dropped a trailer for a brand new Paper Mario game, The Origami King, and naturally we have been left with many questions. For only the third time in my YouTube career, I have succumbed to the temptation to break down a trailer shot by shot in order to wring as much information from it as possible. Unfortunately, in the case of Paper Mario, much of this kind of curiosity comes from very desperate fans hoping so dearly for any shred of the games they once loved to show itself, and also hoping that game-breaking elements from recent titles are no longer present. It's, uh, it's a little nerve-wracking. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, but that's not all we're doing here. Mostly, I'm just trying to figure out what the game is like and what's going on in the story. Sometimes it's just fun to obsess over a trailer and pick it apart for the sake of doing it. So, without further ado, let's crack this baby open! This opening scene speaks for itself. The main antagonistic force of the game, presumably the Origami King, converts people into followers by folding them up origami style. This lends the game a very creepy vibe, and I especially love how Nintendo chose to establish this vibe first thing in the trailer. The only visual thing to point out here is that seeing this room in Peach's castle with the, with the staircase and the sun emblem at the bottom tickles my nostalgia bone every time. <laughs> Ah, I'm just easy, I guess. So, Mario is dropped through a trap door, and I think it's safe to assume that next we are seeing the dungeon he falls into. Which is kind of like, did Peach have this dungeon here the whole time? Like, I mean, it is a castle. Right? Like, did, did the origami people, did they just they just build it? They just dig out? Like, when did they have time to dig out this whole dungeon? <laughs> I don't really know. Maybe Peach has had a dungeon. Anyway, we see origami shy guys walking into what looks like a cell full of baddies that have yet to be folded. Then we see Bowser, who seems to have been folded up into a particularly tiny little square for some reason, clipped and unable to escape, while the silhouettes of two folded shy guys carry away what looks like a Koopa Troopa, presumably to be folded as well. It's all pretty dire stuff, I must say. Then we see a shy guy folding to transform itself into this character here. Uh, it very cleverly turns into a solid square first because origami is traditionally made of perfect squares. I don't know, it's kind of a... Kind of a nice detail, I don't know. <laughs> At first I wondered if this might be like a Twilight Princess situation where it turns out the Origami King is actually a different character than you think, but no. Promo material has confirmed this guy right here to be the titular king himself. In the next shot, we see him starting this whole origami mess by wrapping the castle up in these ribbons. Curiously, we don't end up seeing what the finished product looks like. Does the castle go flat? Is it just wrapped up, maybe paper mache style as we see elsewhere? in the trailer? Is this just folding up all the people inside? Who knows? When the ribbons first appear, they come over the mountaintop, suggesting the Origami King is pulling this power from another location. This idea is supported later, as we will soon see. Here we also get the first glimpse of what seems to be a lift system, which we will also see more of later. Then we get this wonderful overhead shot of more colored ribbons making their way toward the castle. Its proximity to the castle suggests this is Toad Town. Will they call it Toad Town? Or is that too much of a callback to the original game? It might be a little cynical to suggest that, but in the last few games they have been extremely careful not to make any sort of references to the old game, so I wouldn't be surprised if this town got a new name. Judging by the layout, it does seem like a town we are going to be visiting, and in the top right corner we can see a path leading out of town and away from the castle. Whether this will take us to a new area or a world map is technically yet to be seen, but I am remaining hopeful. Next, ribbons continue to wrap up the castle, but then this terrific action movie sequence starts. A shy guy riding the clown car zooms toward the castle, and we soon see that he is coming to rescue Bowser, which is really cool. He's just a generic baddie, but the action itself carries a lot of character, you know? Like he's coming to, <laughs> coming to save his boss. Mario, Bowser, and a second origami person run over the roof and dodge the ribbons, then jump off and land in the clown car, making their escape just as the last ribbons fall into place. And finally, we have gameplay. This opening shot shows us a pretty cool little wooded area with a lake. On the far left, we can see a treasure chest. Treasure chest confirmed! <laughs> Huge news right there. 
No, even more interestingly though, Mario seems to have some sort of bag in his inventory. My guess is that this is some sort of quest item, but I really don't know what it could be for. Elsewhere in the shot, we see these holes. This is very cute. It's a paper world, so what do we see when the paper is torn away? These wires holding it all up, of course. The question now is, will this be a mechanic similar to the painting mechanic in Color Splash? That game had shy guys sucking up splotches of paint with straws, leaving behind blank spots that Mario had to paint in again with his hammer. Will we be filling in these holes, or are they just for show? Deepening the question, we see a new type of baddie that, surprisingly, is not made of origami. This is a giant paper mache Goomba. This could be a Goomba that has been turned paper mache. Maybe that's what happens when instead of getting folded, you get wrapped up with those ribbons. Or maybe this is something of a costume and someone is inside, like we kind of see at the end of the trailer. Whatever the case, this Goomba explains all the torn up spots. It's shown eating a hole through a house. On its backside is a symbol that looks like it represents the Origami King. As it turns to the camera, we can see bits of paper creepily stuck to its face and more of that wire framing inside its body. Very, very unnerving. Next, I'm going to make some assumptions here. Mario is down in the dungeon and finds the other origami guy. Or girl. Not sure. This other or origami person was probably also locked away by the origami king. Perhaps they are siblings? The trailer likes to jump around a lot, so next we find Mario and his origami friend in one of those lifts we saw earlier, moving over the very pretty mountains. They seem to be meeting a character here. Yes, it is extremely disappointing that baddies are absolutely not allowed to have names in the new Paper Mario games. It's an absurd limitation that I will never get behind. It's particularly disheartening to see this concept in action right here in the trailer. Me? Well, I'm bob -omb. What are you, are, is all your names bob -omb? How do you tell each other apart? It's ridiculous. <laughs> I don't know. However, this bob -omb seems to be missing a fuse. And because of what we see later in the trailer, he does seem to be some sort of at least semi-unique character. Even here, he seems to have something of a laid back blase attitude. Next, we get a shot of Mario running through a pretty field of long grass. Again, we see that bag in his inventory. Also some signs and this weird little door thing. And I'm not really sure what that is. Then one of the most exciting shots of the game for people who want a Paper Mario game with actual characters. Mario is rushing down a rapid. It seems to be something of a mini game where you can jump to grab coins. But the most interesting thing is that we see Mario, his origami friend, a uniquely dressed toad controlling the boat and the bob -omb from earlier. The Toad probably just controls the boat, but the bob -omb is clearly accompanying Mario, and something about seeing all four together at once makes me go, look, it's some characters, <laughs> like a little group of them. That's just how desperate I am, I guess. Kind of sad, really, that we've come to this. <laughs> anyway, right at the end of this downward slope part, we can see that this really is a mini game. Hearts are displayed on the top to represent the boat's health, suggesting there are hazards to avoid. On the bottom, we can see that you use the control stick to steer, and for whatever reason, you hit ZR to throw confetti. Uh, fish bait, <laughs> maybe, just for fun. Celebrate, I, not, not a clue. Next, we suddenly return to the dungeon where presumably Mario meets Origam Person. Origam Person gives Mario his new paper-related ability, springy accordion arms to grab stuff with. This is definitely the first time Mario uses this ability because he looks at his hands as though this is kind of a weird thing, which, you know, it is. <laughs> Mario is standing on a symbol, suggesting that perhaps you use the ability whenever you see this symbol. The cutout mechanic in Color Splash was pretty silly and never used to do anything particularly clever. So this does send up a bit of a red flag for me. See the symbol, make the arms do the thing, then continue doesn't sound particularly exciting. But hey, definitely gotta wait and see on that one. Next, we get a pretty random shot of Mario and his friend, who seems to be having a very nice time, chilling in a hot spring with Magikoopa and Bowser Jr. Curiously, Bowser Jr. says, ta-da, how do I look? But he only looks like himself, so maybe something was wrong with him before this shot? Was he perhaps wrapped and the hot water unfolded him? Uh, it's a pretty out there guess, but I'd, I'd like to see you do better. One interesting detail here is that there seems to be a chain leading out of the water and attached to this big tree. Is there a chain chomp in that water or something? Huh, yeah, I don't know. 
Next, we get our first look at the archaeologist Toad character. He and Mario seem to be in some sort of ancient temple, because we see this, <laughs> this silly image obviously parodying Egyptian art, but with a tall, human-like toad instead. They peek around the corner, and we see what looks like the shadow of a toad with a hole instead of a face. Very, very creepy, and makes me wonder if there are a great many ways that the Origami King enslaves people. Folding, paper mache and face cut out -ing? Or is there something else going on here? Worth noting, there's a hole in the floor here, which is probably barring their path. Either Mario will have to cover the hole, or it will turn this room into a permanent dead end. Who knows which? Now here's an interesting one. Lots to take in here. First, obviously, this seems to be Mario riding in a shoe around a large open area. Do areas like this connect the game's different locations, or is this something of an isolated area to explore? Either way, we can see enemies to fight, a pokey and what looks like it might be a money mall off to the left, I'm not really sure, but I can see like a dirt kind of pop thing happening over there. There are glowing spots, not sure what those do. Way off in the distance, there is a warp pipe with a number on it, which we'll see more of in a bit. There's a tower, which is probably where Mario is about to explore. We can see one of those ribbons, which I assume leads off to the castle. This is a cool visual effect, but it also makes me think that the goal here is to go and remove the sources of these ribbons in order to free the castle and get inside. Finally, we can see here that either the sun or the moon is jet black, like it's been stolen. I am leaning towards sun, seeing as we're in a desert and it's basically nighttime. Maybe it's been folded up or something and you've got to put it back, a story element through the whole game, or just in this sequence, who knows. Then we see a giant ball coming over a hill, presumably to chase after Mario, because the devs seem to just love, just love chase sequences, I don't know what's with that. Quick cut to a squadron of paper airplanes flying over some gorgeous clouds. Cut to a chase sequence, though curiously not one with a giant rock. Instead, after looking at it closely, I think this just might be the missing sun. I mean, look at it. It sure looks like a sun, right? It's big. It's round. Sun looks like a sun. I don't, I don't know. Here's another shot that doesn't make me feel super confident in the origami arms thing. Mario is once more standing on a symbol and he's pulling down a flap of paper, I'm assuming so he can use it as a platform. I'm really, really hoping they do something clever with this mechanic because this just isn't very interesting so far. And if Nintendo insists on leaning really, really hard on the paper gimmicks, I do hope they make it really work. It's got to feel like it's worth something and not just an arbitrary hurdle. I am also not a fan of how this action seems to use motion controls. I hope beyond all hope that this is purely optional. I want to play this game with a pro controller or in handheld and not have to deal with swinging my arms around awkwardly all the time. Now here's a shot that's got some people concerned. Here we can see warp pipes with numbers on them. Seeing as there are six of them, it's easy to assume these will lead to the game's different areas. The warp pipe in the desert supports this theory. Many take this to be evidence against a large connected world. However, I think these could just be for fast travel. It's still at least possible that we'll be able to travel between places normally and that these pipes are just shortcuts. Or alternate theory. These pipes are only used in the desert area. The desert is the only place we see in the trailer with one of these pipes. And look at the symbol on the floor. A giant sun. The room even gives off kind of a desert ruins-y vibe. Similarly, what if every area in the game has its own set of pipes in its own room with its own symbol on the floor? I don't know. Something to think about. Next, Mario fishes up a giant cheap cheap and the paper scrap splash effect is very nice. <laughs> And finally, we get our first look at the battle system. Here and in other promotional material, we see that the game uses a new system where you turn rings to line up baddies and more efficiently attack them all in a row. Using lots of big attacks to beat large groups instead of strategically battling smaller groups is something I really dislike about modern Paper Mario, though I will admit this ring system could make it feel a lot deeper and more fun. Promo stuff says it turns battles into something like puzzles, and that's certainly an intriguing idea. 
Battles were way too simple and easy in the last two games, sometimes feeling like they took no effort at all, so this could be a new way to make you actually have to think about what you're doing. As I said in my discussion video, I'm sure there will be a lot of interesting enemy interactions because of this. Here we can see that ring moves are, or can be, limited, so you've got to try and make just the right move. There's no knowing what determines how many moves you get at this time, unfortunately. Also interesting, there's a timer on the top right corner with a little prompt to buy more time. We can see that Mario has a very large number of coins here, so it stands to reason that buying time and maybe other things in battle will be a big part of the game. Having a real use for coins beyond just <laughs> buying enough cards and stickers to make yourself immortal would certainly be nice. Though, with a more strategy-based combat system, I do wonder why they feel the need to pressure us with a time limit. It is possible that not every battle will be timed. We also don't know what happens when that timer reaches zero. Later in the shot, we see that lining up a group of baddies gives Mario an attack bonus, which is pretty cool. This garners a reaction from the toads in the stands, which is the final interesting thing about this shot. Crowds watch you battle again, which, yes, technically was a feature in Thousand Year Door. Will these toads affect the gameplay like in that game, or are they just for show? Either way, it's very nice to see it. Next, we have Mario once more carrying his jolly old bag, walking through what looks like a Sniffit town in the desert. It's still nighttime supporting the missing sun theory. This place is glitzy and covered with neon lights, much like a Las Vegas strip. We see a few different buildings to enter, and even a few Sniffit NPCs that don't appear to be hostile. I must say, seeing multiple towns inhabited by different Mario races is very exciting. I mean, nothing makes a world feel more real than people, you know, like, living in it, even if they are just generic baddies without names. Here we get another wide open area, this time a boat cruising around the ocean. Again, we don't know how this whole system will work. Maybe this is an isolated area, but seeing more of this definitely lends to the idea of the world being more connected. It's very possible that the individual areas are still completely separate, and each one has its own overworld like this, connecting its own smaller areas, but even that would be a huge improvement over a world map in my book. Here we can't see much that looks interactable, just a little question mark shaped island. Is this something you can interact with here out in the open, or do you dock and go inside and it becomes a bigger area to explore? Dunno! Suddenly we're back down in the dungeon. Mario seems to have just freed Bowser because we can see the clip that was holding him. Then a fiery area with Mario jumping over flames, you know, standard Mario stuff. And there's that bag again, but notice how it's flatter this time. Like, look at it, it's just kind of, it's just kind of droopier. What's, what's the deal with that? <laughs> now I'm more confused than ever! Next, we see some more battle. Mario is jumping on a line of origami boos. Two interesting things here. First, we can see that Mario is using shiny boots. Now, so far, there has been no real evidence to suggest that Origami King will once more use expendable attacks a la Sticker Star and Color Splash, which is a gr great relief. Some people were worried about this, but we really don't know what this means yet. It could be this is some sort of boost Mario earned. It could be a special attack that allows him to jump on booze. It could be an equipped item or even something like a badge. At this point, it's impossible to tell. The second interesting thing isn't actually in this shot, but the same shot in the Chinese version of the trailer. In it, we can see the archaeologist Toad standing behind Mario. I have seen so, so many people assume this is confirmation that partners are back from the first two games. Unfortunately, I do not feel this is necessarily the case. This toad could just be tagging along for a story reason and following Mario into battle to crack some jokes or maybe even to give Mario a little battle tutorial. There are just so many possible explanations. I will fully admit, it's weird that the two versions of the trailer were different, and even weirder that apparently the Chinese version got taken down. But I don't know, I'm not convinced. There's a fine possibility that characters will have a role in battle, don't get me wrong, promo material even mentions recruiting allies. But I'm doubtful that they'll act like traditional partners, where they hang behind you the whole time and have their own attacks and everything. I hope I'm wrong though. 
Next, Mario and Origami Person are in a room with ninja stars all over the floor, and they look up to see the ceiling covered in ninjas. Not much to see here, obviously just a part of some story sequence. Similarly, we see some sort of string or wire creature coming down a glitzy flight of stairs, and I must say, what the heck even is this? It's very creepy. Behind it, we can see some sort of object. It might be a roll of tape or something, and it's got the Origami King's logo on it. Next, a return to the paper airplane concept, though these planes do seem to be a different color, so I don't know if it's the exact same sequence or what. They strike Bowser's airship, where we can see Mario, Bowser, Bowser Jr., and a number of baddies, so that's exciting. <laughs> just, I don't know, just kind of fun. When the planes hit, a few spikes are thrown comically overboard, or gruesomely, depending on how you look at it, I guess. Then we see a giant turtle, or tortoise, emerging from what looks like actual realistic dirt. So, that's interesting. I'm not really sure how they find real dirt. Uh, maybe the game just gets that meta, and even beyond wireframes, we start to see the world outside of this strange little diorama. Weird. <laughs> it's weird, weird concept. Next, Mario, Bowser, and Origami Person friend look up at something that's apparently very dire. Lightning flashes. We can see the shadow of a drawbridge and either squares or blocks piling up out of sight. As the shot goes on, we see the actual chains and what might be the glow of lava. Bowser seems to be very upset about what's happening, so I would not be surprised if something bad was happening to his castle here. In the next shot, if you look really closely, you can see how the release date is only two months away, which j just might be the strangest detail in this whole trailer. Seriously though, then we get one last shot at the end of Mario, Origami Friend, and the bob -omb character in some sort of back room kind of place. Mario is wearing a large paper mache Samus helmet and is pretending to shoot aliens. I've seen people wonder if this is some sort of tease for upcoming reveals, though always the skeptic, I'm more likely to believe this is just another little crossover Easter egg, seeing as Nintendo is very fond of those. There's also a big DK head. There's a Goomba head too, which makes me wonder all over again if the paper mache Goomba we saw near the beginning was a different baddie in a costume after all. There are also some objects up on the shelf that I can't really identify. There's a toad in the back wearing a martial arts getup, so this could be some sort of dojo. And finally, there's something twitching in the trash can on the left. It very much looks like another toad, though it doesn't look like it's been folded. It just kind of looks like it's been crumpled up and stuffed in there. Or maybe it's a toad scrunched down and looking for something in the trash can. Will the mysteries <laughs> never end? Well, that's it, my friends. Surely more promotional material will come in good time. And of course, it won't be long before the game itself answers all of our questions. But for now, that's the stuff I could observe in this initial trailer. I'm sure I've missed plenty of stuff, so fill me in on your own observations and theories down in the comments. Thank you for joining me, and you have a day that is good. Olivia. Olive I just learned the origami. It's Olivia. The, 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 per the person's name is Olivia. All right. Is that a pun? Huey. Like color hue, Kirsty, like sticker, Olivia. Yeah, I don't know. I would have called her Fold, Fold, uh, I would have called her Fold Trisha. Very clever and funny. <laughs>